Bye. So now we're going to take a short break. During this break, though, yeah, yeah, but no, leave it right in it. Leave it right in it. So um, we're going to play a little sample of a video interview series uh, that I did. In, uh, Steve, video guy Steve came with me uh, to HP Protect, which is HP's internal security conference. So we're going to play a, a very short interview that I did with Jacob West, who is the uh, CTO of Enterprise Security Products and Head of Research. So we'll roll that and be right back with the stories for this week. We're here with Jacob West. Jacob, what is your role here at HP? I'm CTO for Enterprise Security Products and Head of Research. Excellent. And the latest project that you have is centered around threat intelligence, correct? That's right. So what can you do to incentivize organizations to participate in threat intelligence? Well, I think in the last year, there's been really a sea change in the industry um, where organizations used to see the threat information they have and the intelligence they collect as mm -hmm. essentially a competitive differentiator. Mm -hmm. um, today, I think we've seen a big change where uh, companies are beginning to realize that the adversaries are collaborating in pretty mm -hmm. effective ways, sharing intelligence very effectively with one another, and that the industry really needs to do the same. So I think um, the visibility of that within mm -hmm. the industry is really changing their sentiment towards sharing all on its own. I don't mm -hmm. think we have to do too much to motivate it. I think that's interesting that they see the attackers collaborating, so we need to collaborate with each other, whereas before we kept that information to ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. So that's really cool. Um, so what do you say to those that don't care to really know their enemy, that just want to respond to threats without understanding a full background about who is attacking them and why? Sure. So over the last couple of years, three years, maybe we've seen, I think, an increased focus within the industry, security mm -hmm. industry in particular, on different types of threat actors, whether it be mm -hmm. activist groups or groups that are uh, nation state backed or mm -hmm. cyber criminals. Um, I actually believe this is a bit of a red herring. Mm -hmm. I think the important thing to understand is the capabilities of the adversary as a whole, how mm -hmm. they are collaborating with one another and not necessarily focusing in on a single group. So in a lot of ways, I suppose I would agree with firms that don't um, care so much about an individual actor mm -hmm. targeting them, more really thinking about the tools, techniques, and motivations behind the adversary overall. Mm. How does that change your uh, the way you would respond to? So like if you had more intelligence about a particular group or other group, would that change the way you respond or not so much? Well, so there are certain um, companies and in particular certain industry segments like mm -hmm. media or finance that are targeted in very particular ways. So mm -hmm. we see organized crime, cyber criminals going after financial services organizations yeah, a lot. Yeah. There was a big heist uh, back earlier in the year where one group took $45 million in cash from ATMs in Manhattan in a single day. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, in this case, it's worth understanding that you are being targeted very specifically by certain groups. Yes, yeah, I agree, that's awesome. Um, so what are some examples of what you would do with the information that you gather from threat intelligence in order to protect yourselves? Like a specific example of an incident, say, that you would find out about and be able to respond to better because you had this threat intelligence information. Well, so I think there's an interesting intersection between, uh, again, these particular adversaries or types of adversaries and the technical tools and, uh, and mechanisms that they're using. Um, I'll give you an example that I actually shared in my keynote this morning. Um, you might see some potentially malicious activity that uh, looks like malware, but existing mm -hmm. AV solutions aren't capable of uh, identifying it. Mm -hmm. um, we know today that adversaries are repackaging malware so that they can't be easily identified, but they still have the same core components underneath. They still have the mm -hmm. same basic capabilities. Um, understanding that a particular adversary is targeting you and that they've used a particular type of malware or a particular technique for exploiting organizations in the past mm -hmm. could be a great way to connect the dots to take two sort of incomplete pictures. Mm -hmm. One, this malicious activity that you don't quite understand the origin of, and two, this actor that you know about their behavior, but you don't know that they're particularly the ones attacking you today. Mm -hmm. Say, ah, this technical bit that I'm seeing, this evidence of an attack, looks like the kind of behavior that a particular adversary may have used in the past, mm -hmm. and that could help you fill in what's really yeah, happening really to you at the moment. The story. Yeah, Absolutely. exactly right. I totally agree. Jacob, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Great to be here. I'm back with Jacob West to talk about HP Threat Central. Jacob, what is Threat Central? So Threat Central is a community sourced security intelligence platform. And the idea is to really help organizations share threat intelligence and mitigations with one another in close to real time. Mm -hmm. um, this differs from current security and threat intelligence sharing in that 
it's less manual, it's more mm -hmm. automatic. Mm -hmm. It shares intelligence that is contextual to your organization. Mm -hmm. So rather than just a view of what's going on in the world, mm -hmm. we help you see what's really uh, affecting your business. Mm -hmm. And it's built around open standards, so anybody can participate. So how do you protect the individual company's information that may be shared within the Threat Central uh, community? So um, we have two models for how we think mm -hmm. Threat Central will work. One is we host a community in the HP cloud, which mm -hmm. is secured by both experts from my research team at HP mm -hmm. Security Research, as well as the global cybersecurity team at HP, mm -hmm. um, obviously using uh, best practices, uh, best, best of breed security solutions from across the industry. Mm -hmm. um, the other model that we think will perhaps even be more valuable to the industry is we're very good at developing software systems and the platform, mm -hmm. but we don't have to operate all of those communities. And so we actually want to make the Threat Central platform available to our customers so they can run private communities of their own within mm -hmm. a given geography or within mm -hmm. a given industry segment. Um, and so we think that way uh, we won't be collecting all of the secrets for the entire world in one right. place and we can right. let smaller groups um, apply their own security standards really. Mm -hmm. So how would I integrate my data within this architecture and what types of data will be shared? Yeah, so what we announced today is uh, an early access community. Mm -hmm. This will be productized sometime next year, probably. Mm -hmm. um, initially, we're connecting ArcSight ESM instances mm -hmm. with a central uh, server that we manage. Mm -hmm. And they're able to either automatically or with as much kind of manual control as they want, mm -hmm. share any kind of security event, threat event that is visible in their ArcSight instance. So this can mm -hmm. range from malware activity to other kinds of attacks. Anything that you would see in a SIM product really uh, mm -hmm. could be shared. Right. Right. And this is the neighborly thing to do, right? I mean, we're doing this in order to gain enough intelligence to improve our defenses, right? Because I can see some apprehension, but at the same time, I'm thinking, well, this community is great. We really need to help people embrace it. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, as you've heard a couple of times at the conference now, the adversaries are collaborating really effectively with mm -hmm. each other. And I think in the last year or two, the industry has come around to see that we need to start to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, the great thing about the Threat Central model is that it's built around uh, a very policy-driven sharing mechanism. And you so control what you share. Organizations yeah. control very um, precisely and at a very fine level of granularity mm -hmm. what they share, and they're able to anonymize those data pretty heavily. So they're really sharing information about who's attacking them and how, mm -hmm. not about their internal systems or what's mm -hmm. being attacked. Do you have provisions to make sure that the information is not released publicly that shouldn't be? I know in some of these collaborative efforts in the past, they've had a problem where someone re reveals or discovers that this particular piece of malware is being used by these bad guys, and if that leaks out, all of a sudden the bad guys go away and they scurry away. So do you have some like procedural things to help organizations control the information? So again, you know, there are, there are sharing efforts underway already. Groups like mm -hmm. FS and IT, ISAC already mm -hmm. encourage firms within those given segments, financial services and IT, to yep. share with one another. Right. Um, and that's been pretty effective in some ways, although mm -hmm. it is incredibly manual still. Mm -hmm. The thing that really concerns me about those approaches is it relies on a given analyst in a given SOC to make the right choice at the right time about what to share. Mm -hmm. And that's literally a question of copying and pasting, exporting from a SIM product right. into an email that goes out to a mailing list. Mm -hmm. The cool thing about the automation in Threat Central mm -hmm. is you can define a policy around what's shared and how mm -hmm. and with whom. Mm -hmm. Then you can use that policy to enforce those rules in an automatic way. Mm -hmm. And you can come back afterwards and audit what has been shared and where it's gone. Mm -hmm. And so I think that level of control isn't only going to make it easier easier to share things, but it's right. going to make it much safer to share because you can really mm -hmm. see, again, what's being shared and audit that after the fact. Fantastic. Thanks, Jacob. Thanks a lot. It's great to be here.